So this is a question. It says in a 100 meter race, the winners timed at 11 seconds, the second place finishers timed at 12.1 second. It asks, how far is the second place finisher behind the winner when she crosses the finish line? Um, so this is a typical word question. It uh, leaves up to you to come up with the expressions and equations to solve, to uh, figure out. And as with many word questions, sometimes there are potential places for ambiguity. For example, when it says, when she crosses the finish line, who is, the pers uh, who is she that the question is referring to? Uh, is the question referring to the winner or is the question referring to the second place finisher? And these are the places where you have to make your judgment call. And here, the uh, I would uh, say what I would assume uh, the person she is, is the winner. It's both from grammatical point, because <laughs> this modifying uh, subordinate clause is closer to winners. So <laughs> I think uh, the pronoun in the clause refers to the winner, that's one. And two, I think if uh, this pronoun refers to the second place finisher, then that actually introduces more ambiguity because um, did the winner stop after finishing the cross line, uh, cross finish, uh, crossing the finish line, or did the winner continue to run at the top sprint speed? And uh, I, so, <laughs> so sometimes, I guess um, with the auto graded questions like this, when you see ambiguity in the question, you um, make your best choice, go with it, um, get an answer, put the answer in, and, and see if the system says the answer is incorrect, then um, maybe the other choice was the cor correct choice as programmed in. So that's one way you can handle it, especially on an auto graded system. Now, if you are working this out on, I don't know, um, pen and paper um, assessment, then you rely on there being a human grader and you maybe state your assumptions. You are assuming that um, this when she crosses the finish line is referring to the winner. So with those choices, um, let me just uh, uh, draw a picture of the setup. So you have um, the, well, the both the runners, um, starting from the starting line and they are going to get to the finish line and the winner gets there first and this takes uh, 11 seconds and as the winner crosses the finish line the second place finisher hasn't quite reached the finish line yet uh, she will in uh, in additional 1.1 seconds because the total travel time of um, so in 12.1 second, the, the second place finisher will get to the finish line. But it, at the time of 11 second, I have to figure out where the second place finisher will be at that 11 second mark. And I think one of the hints was, oh, or actually the question itself says, assume the velocity of each runner is constant throughout the race. Okay, um, so that I think that makes it things a lot easier. Um, and so if this were in a physics class, then um, then you might set up some proportionality. You might guess some of the physics thing, but since this is a physics class, let me uh, make use of some of the definitions that you've learned. Um, in particular, velocity is a change of position over change of time. So we know the velocity of the second place finisher. The velocity of the second place finisher is going to be the displacement, 100 meters, divided by the time it takes for the second place finisher to get to the end point, uh, get to the finish line. So that's a 12.1 second. And the question was, OK, where is she, uh, x, at uh, time equals 11 second and oh we know the velocity so we can actually make use of this relationship again except for a different time so the position of the second place finisher at um, time um, t equals 11 seconds will be 
the so I'm imagining moving this over. So um, it will be the velocity of the second place finisher times the duration of time, 11 seconds. So instead of 12.1 second, I multiply by 11 seconds. So 100 meters divided by 12.1 second times 11 seconds. I don't think I can do that in my head. So let me do it on my calculator. 100 divided by 12.1, divide, not divide by, times 11. Okay, 90.9. Oh, and so that will give you the position, and this is where you have to read the question carefully. It's asking for how far behind um, the winner is. So the winner said 100 meters, so 90.9. .9. I have to subtract that from 100. So let me store that into memory, and 100 minus recall from memory. So 9.09 .09 .09 meters or 9.1 meter. Because let me put in 9.09 .09 so that I am doing three significant figures. Um, for most of the questions in this class, I recommend that you keep three significant figures. That's um, um, that's the way to avoid probably the rounding errors most of the time. So, so this is a relatively simple question, but uh, <laughs> as I keep saying, for the, the main thing that you learn in this class is really that general problem solving strategy that's often very applicable for um, word problems like this.